Welcome back to Red Dot Radio. In this episode, we are going to go through the good, bad, ugly, and crazy moments from around the NFL in week three, starting with the good. The New York Jets and Aaron Rodgers played a hell of a game against the New England Patriots last Thursday night. Shout out to Aaron Rodgers. You know, he had a tough start to last season in 2023 with his Achilles injury. He's been able to bounce back this year, and the Jets are sitting at 2-1. and one. You know, we predicted the Jets to be a dark horse this year to try to make the playoffs. They are making good on that prediction starting off well playing good defense playing smart offense if the Jets can keep this up they are going to be looking pretty especially as Buffalo is steamrolling the competition so far this season Dallas Goddard played in his best game ever against the New Orleans Saints you're talking about a tight end here folks a guy who blocks and catches the ball throughout the game was able to go for over 180 yards in the game through the air he had a great game I mean just think about this one stat line he had three catches over 30 yards as a tight end that is incredible shout out to Dallas Goddard had a great career making the case you know for one of the best tight ends in the game right now definitely top five but keep doing your work helping the Eagles get the win along with Saquon Barkley over the Saints it was a very very good game Um, I think the Eagles have a lot, you know, still to get better at, but knowing you have a guy like Dallas Goddard, that's a great safety net for Jalen Hurts. Moving to the bad from week three, I'm going to focus here on my, your, our Houston Texans here. You know, the Houston Texans are our favorite team on this program. We want to dive into what went wrong when the Houston Texans played the Minnesota Vikings. It was ugly. I don't know if you watched the game, but From the beginning to the end, it just felt like nothing went right for the Houston Texans. When I look at the details, you know, the little intricacies, the breakdowns of what could have happened in order for Houston to win the game, I'm left with this. First things first, the defense, it has to be better. Defense and running the ball in the NFL are two good indicators that a team is going to win the game. Houston did neither of those two things well. Now, the running back situation, Joe Mixon was out an injury, so we know we were playing, you know, with some backups, some reserves. Also, Damian Pierce, our, you know, draft pick, high draft pick from 2023 was out with injury. So we were dealing with, you know, leftovers, third stringers, things like that. But still, you have to be able to have some type of balance to the offense. That's what keeps the defense second guessing, keeps them on their heels instead of just on the attack. Just, you know, looking at CJ Stroud like he has a target on his back. The defense, like I said, was bad. I don't know if it's just because we didn't game plan well enough or if the actual defense took Sam Darnold for granted and just thought, you know, he's really not that good. We'll be able to make the plays. Well, he was distributing the hell out of the ball. Shout out to Sam Darnold. He played a very, very good game. He was smart with the ball. He put our defense in some tough situations. But again, they had the running game going as well. So it was easier for Sam Darnold to hit the play action, look to his second reads, not, you know, he didn't face that much pressure. So we had no type of running game against the Vikings we had no such thing good news right now is that we're still first place in the division bad news is we got blown out by our first opponent with a winning record that's not good to me as a fan what that says is we're good at beating the bad teams we're just not good enough to beat the good teams now the offense I don't know what has happened since week one they look dead the defenses around the NFL, I don't know if the film's out or whatever. Bobby Slow, you got to get the offense better. Better situations. I know CJ's getting the ball out, so I know it's not a, a timing issue or a reading issue by the quarterback. I just don't know if we're putting together enough good plays to extend the drive and to put points on the board each drive. We have to get the offensive scheme better. When I looked at what was happening on the field, I saw the tight ends getting bull rush by defensive ends it's one thing when your tight end's supposed to chip and release like i said earlier with dallas goddard for the philadelphia eagles tight ends have to do two things they have to catch and they have to be able to block so if your tight end is supposed to just block for a second then release to go for a catch good but we had tight ends who were supposed to block all the time because we couldn't do it with the five offensive linemen we had and they still couldn't do it so we had six guys blocking they were rushing four and was still putting pressure over sacks on cj shroud not good enough tight ends we have to get better as blocking as a unit now the defense what was going wrong with the defense what actually was causing the defense to stay on the field long 
and longer throughout the game. They couldn't stop the run. As much as you want to look at the numbers Sam Darnold put up or the day that Justin Jefferson had, they could not stop the run, whether it was first down or third down. Minnesota had very few negative plays. I don't think Sam Darnold had a sack, if any. I know he was pressured, but it didn't just seem like they were creating enough action in the backfield. He had all day to throw. He is in Sam Darnold, especially on third down. You have to be able to generate pressure on third down. And Coach D'Amico, this is what we brought you here for. So he, I know he's going to address it before next week's game. Now, on the offensive side, Laramie Tunsil. G. Louise. Laramie Tunsil. My goodness, dude. I have literally talked to fans, super fans on this show who talk about three things. Death taxes and Laramie Tunsil being false started I don't know why it's so hard for him to watch the ball you can almost book it he will get one penalty every game and sometimes it's always on the worst timing on third down Laramie Tunsil damn it get it together it's at the point where now you have to look at this guy and say we're going to start taking five thousand dollars out of his game check every time he gets a false start penalty it's just a it's a drive killer it is a killer you cannot have that where was Daniil Hunter on the defensive side? Will Anderson Jr. I need to see them more. Way more. Coaching must be fixed before next week. I'm feeling upset. You can tell by my mood. You can tell. I'm not very happy right now. But it's not time to hit the panic button either. We still have a lot of season left. Minnesota is a good team. It was a bad loss. No one predicted us to go undefeated. I just wish we would have played better. I'm pissed because I thought we could have put a put a better effort out there losing by five you know six touchdown two touchdowns but we got steamboated and I don't know if it's because we were on the road like the chances of us playing Minnesota late in the season very unlikely because they're in the NFC so if we face Minnesota it'll be in the Super Bowl but still you have to freaking come prepared and it just did not look that way this past Sunday against the Minnesota Vikings that was the bad from the NFL in week three the Houston Texans just looking god awful on the field Moving along to the ugly, Dallas at home against the Ravens. That was very ugly. Dallas, <sighs> again, again, again. It just seems like it's the same story, different week. It was last week, they got embarrassed at home against New Orleans. This week, they got embarrassed at home against Baltimore. They can't stop the run. We just talked about it with the Texans. If you can't stop the run, you will not be in a good position to win the game. And on offense, who do they have other than C.D. Lamb? Actually. Ezekiel Elliott? No. The tight ends? No. I mean, they're a one-trick pony. Dallas, they're, they should beat the Giants this upcoming week on Thursday night. But at the same time, Dallas's schedule is against them. So they have to be able to win these games. Baltimore obviously needed the win more because they were winless. But damn, Dallas to get steamboated at home two games in a row. Not a great way to start your season. I know the fans are not happy. Not happy at all another ugly moment this week titans the tennessee titans i don't even want to talk about them that long but damn they looked awful specifically will levis they look like they made a mistake getting ready to get rid of malik willis now some people may say green bay is a better team than you know tennessee but damn it malik willis i mean he, he just he just looked like a better athlete so i don't know i don't know i don't know all i know is Malik looked like a better athlete than Will Levis did looking, you know, as a quarterback. And you could say, oh, Will Levis, he, you know, he has more to deal with. But, you know, Malik Willis, he just came in, you know, he he just came into Jordan Love's spot and has done nothing but keep Green Bay looking good. So shout out to him. Um, I know I called it ugly. It's really ugly for Tennessee because Tennessee, what are you going to do? You got to stick with Will Levis at this point. And I don't really know if a lot of people want to play in Tennessee. I mean, Coach Vrabel let, wanted to leave after they decided to trade away A.J. Brown a few years ago. They got rid of D Derrick Henry. <laughs> Another decision fumbled. It's looking like it. The crazy moments from the NFL Week 3. We got Geno Smith and the Seahawks still undefeated and in first place in the NFC West. I would have never believed it. San Fran dropping the ball, not a good look, but Seattle doing what they need to do, winning the games they have to win. You know, they they have a tough schedule as well, but shout out to them. Shout out to Geno. Very, very good production out of him late in his career. 
you can count on him with you know the receivers the dks the you know defense that it's 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 not that great seattle's defense isn't that great but they're good enough i mean it always does feel like seattle's in a close game but maybe that's the way they like it they always pull through the last crazy moment i have from the nfl week three andy dalton getting his win in his first start as panthers quarterback against the las vegas raiders this was a crazy moment we talked about bryce young last week and the potential of him being the biggest bust in nfl history well we talked about what would make bryce young look worse if andy dalton succeeded or if he failed obviously if andy dalton succeeded and that's exactly what happened andy dalton didn't just win he played very very good and the more that Andy Dalton plays well in Carolina, I feel like is the less likely we're going to see Bryce Young as the quarterback in Carolina. I'm not saying it's going to be impossible, but it may be a situation where he has to go somewhere else to revitalize his career. And that wouldn't be the first time we've seen that happen, but essentially maybe he just wasn't meant for this regime in Carolina. Again, the GM did not draft him. The coach was not the coach that you know was there when he was drafted, so... They may go a different direction, but either way, Andy Dalton balled out, got the Carolina Panthers a win that I don't think a lot of people thought they would, seeing that the Vegas Raiders just beat Baltimore last week. So I don't know what the heck is going on in Vegas to go winning from beating Baltimore to losing against Carolina, but I don't think Andy Dalton's that good. I know he's good and he's a serviceable interval quarterback, but we will be back next episode to talk about the NFL week four. Until next time, peace.